Hello everyone. Welcome all of you. Uh, those that are standing can be seated. Those of you that are coming in, you know, please feel free to grab a seat wherever. Uh, once again, we'd like to welcome all of you to the Peaceful Solution Character Education Certification Course. And of course, once again, we're in the acceptance unit and that's the second of five in our junior high series. We started off with the character unit and then we're building up here through the acceptance unit. And tonight we're going to get into chapter three. And one thing to remember, and once we get in through the self-control into the respect unit, you'll always go back to chapter three of the acceptance unit because chapter three is where we really lay the foundation for communication and respect and how positive communication is the foundation for respect whenever we're speaking of individuals and also ourselves. And we'll get into that in this chapter, but once again, for all of you that may not know it, might not know it, there's a lot of people asking. Uh, they say that they're going to the Facebook page and they can't find the acceptance unit. So once again, if you go to our Facebook page and you'll see the PDF download for the character unit, you'll see a tab with an arrow that says more. And if you'll click on that tab, It'll, you'll, you'll open up a, lar a lot larger tab and you'll see the acceptance unit that will look just like the PDF uh, download for the character unit and you can download that for free and print off what you need and use that. It's the teacher's manual and it has all the teacher's notes in it that you'll need to use in teaching classes and you'll want to print out a copy especially if you're overseas and you don't have an opportunity to get one print out a copy and you want to start putting your notes as you go through these classes so when you go to teach you don't realize how valuable these notes are until you go to teach and you you're turning back to chapters that you haven't taught in a while and there's all of your notes from not just your notes but the notes you gathered from other teachers that uh, as they help give input into these classes and also you're going to find that you're going to end up using notes from your students also and you're going to have interaction with them and it's going to make for a very a complete way of giving instructions in a peaceful way. And of course, we finished up. David started off with a note to the teacher to chapter 3, which is positive communication leads to healthy interactions. And we, we finished up chapter 2. And chapter 2, we spoke about a lot of intolerance and how intolerance leads to hate. And we were covering adversity and how we need to accept uh, diversity. Sometimes through the, and I'll say, ignorance of society or the lack of education, remember hatred is taught. It's not something you're born doing. It's something you're taught. Through the ignorance of society of not acquiring the knowledge of what truly is the difference between a black person, a white person, a Hispanic person, an Asian person, a European person. You know, what is the difference? And really it comes down to the customs and the education they've been given in their country or their nationality, and, and you can have people very dif different even in the same country. Take someone from Los Angeles and put them on a farm in Texas. They'll feel very out of place. Um, take someone from Texas and put them in the middle of New York City. If they've never been to a big city, they'll feel very out of place. And then take any of us, take someone from New York City, which is a city of a little over 8, 8 million people, and then put them in something like Lagos, Nigeria, which is 26 million in Los Angeles. In fact, it's hard to get a well. It's hard to get water at all in California. But this diversity we're speaking of, we all face hardships. We all face challenges. But the things we have to do is come together and accept each other, having value. Remember, that's something we deem important, accepting each other, learning to accept the differences. When I say differences, as David talked about the last class, personalities. Our characters should all be coming close to the same as far as continuity, as far as not bringing harm to ourselves, someone else, or the environment. And David used the example of a house, which he was referring to the workplace manual, but a house on how the substance of the house that solidifies it, that makes it firm, that that makes it to where, you know, it can't be knocked down. Now, of course, that he was comparing that to character. And then the decor on the outside, whether it be flowers, the paint, the roof, the trim, all of those things were the, referred to as the personality of the house. And there's a lot of things that we face in society today, and I want you to think about this as we start with Chapter 3, with positive communication leads to healthy interaction. 
And I want you to think about what's going on in society today and what we face in society today because we have a lot of unhealthy interaction in our society no matter what nation you live in due to uh, many challenges, whether it be finances, whether it be viruses. Um, a lot of countries are taking many different stances. But as we go through here, we're going to use some examples tonight and we're going to show how society sometimes can tell you that this is okay. This is the way we ought to be. And then it can flip very quickly to where the very same words and phrases you can be referred to as stupid, ignorant, uncaring, and even labeled as a murderer. Well, how can we say this phrase in this certain instance is okay and I'll challenge you because tonight we're going to use an example of where the phrase is acceptable and I'll tell you what it is a little bit into the class where the phrase is acceptable always leads to murder always but where the phrase is not acceptable there's no proof that anyone dies now how could a society get to that point remember education and and knowledge what is knowledge well it's power well what is power it's knowledge and without the knowledge to do the right thing we don't have the power to make the right choice but we'll get to those things and we'll put those all together as we start putting together this lesson here if you turn over to lesson plan 3 page C lesson plan 3 page C uh, David finished with the note to the teacher and he was going through as you're turning over there just to rehearse a little bit he was going through in the second paragraph about poor communication. You know, he talked about in the very first paragraph about positive communication. That's respectful, moral, and considerate and demonstrates an attitude of acceptance for all people. But poor communication, on the other hand, not only results in misunderstandings and hurt feelings, but also demonstrates an attitude of intolerance. And remember, the attitude of intolerance, you had the equation for your notes. You can write it down there. The equation of hate is on page 24 and it starts with intolerance and we see a lot of hate in society today we see a lot of lack of caring for each other a lack of doing what is right to assist other people we see a lot of sickness a lot of death we see a lot of hurt in society and we have to step back and realize that what we're doing is not working when we keep doing the same thing over and over and part of doing it over and over and it's not working, of course, that, uh, that's the definition of insanity to, well, it didn't work, let's try it again the same way and see if it works this time. Well, no, it didn't work. Let's try it again and see if it works this time. No, it, it just doesn't work. And the accepting of facts, the accepting of rules, if you remember the character unit, when we talked about the ripple effect, we talked about a governing body of rules and how they guard and protect a society. And that keeps society safe. Well, there's an accepting of rules uh, that we need to accept. And, of course, there's the creation of rules that we got to accept. Well, is this rule, is it really helping anybody? Or is it not beneficial at all? Is this rule just for making money? Does it help any individual? Does it help everybody? If you have a rule and it only helps one or two people, well, that's not really a benefit to society. Rules and character, everyone benefits from nobody suffers so think about that as we get into here we're going to go back through this procedure starting with one and of course it's reminds students of the previous lesson and that was accepting diversity and they learned that a greater appreciation and value for others comes from taking the time to get to know them and of course explain that stereotyping and labeling are based on generalizations Share that it is important to accept others as unique individuals. Review the previous lesson by asking the following questions. Then one of the questions it gives us here as teachers to ask are what are some of the ways intolerance can be directed toward an individual? So, and of course, we, for your notes, you can put there pages 25, 26, and 27 is where we discuss those, but you'll see here in your teacher's manual, you'll have italicized and it gives you the ideal answers of what we would have covered. Saying hurtful things about a person's nationality, religious beliefs, mannerisms, 
and style of dress. And when you think about, you hear a lot of things about the border on the news right now and Mexicans. Most of them are actually from Africa or the lower part of Central America, whether it be El Salvador, Guatemala, so forth, Honduras, but very few Mexicans. The Mexicans know if they cross, they're just going to send them back. They literally put them on a bus and right back across the bridge they go. They don't get very far. A Guatemalan or someone from El Salvador or someone from the Republic of Congo, they can't just put on the bus and send them back to Mexico. Mexico will tell them very quickly, not our citizen. You keep him. He's yours or she's yours. And that's where we see people crossing over the border. But why are they crossing over the border? Why does everybody think that there's only one nation, one country, a person can survive or succeed in? You know, what, what has led to that when you have wealth, throughout all of this world. You have one of the richest oil countries in the world, especially in Africa. It is the richest oil country in Africa, which is Nigeria. Why do, why do the people not benefit from this? And why are we accepting of the fact that nations are very wealthy when it comes to resources, but the citizens are extremely poor and doing without? You know, well, how do we accept that and this is just to get your mind focused and getting some visualization into your mind. How do we accept that an athlete who will buy their jersey, will go to their games, should be paid 35 or $40 million a year to play sports, but yet we have people all around the world starving to death? People that aren't able to have running water people that can't fend for themselves due to the massive lack of infrastructure. How is that acceptable when you have a baseball team that their payroll is over $1 billion a year, $1 billion a year, and we still see people doing without? How is that acceptable? How is that beneficial? And why is it being allowed? I read an article the other day, and for those of you that are a little older, that grew up before me even, there was a very popular basketball player named Larry Bird. And they asked him what he thought about sports today. And he said, you know the ironic thing? My whole NBA career, I made $24 million, which is a lot of money. He said, you know, there's over 86 basketball players in the NBA that will make more this year than I made my whole career. And that's how much it has changed. Well, is it truly beneficial? And is that really the direction we want to go? And why, why should we accept it? And when I say accept it, I don't mean raise up against it and start burning down basketball arenas or, you know, things like that. That's not beneficial. But think about what we do as a group as a race, as a society, and how does it benefit others? Well, we look here for in B, the question B, that the teacher, we are to ask our students and get feedback and always try to bring it up to date. You know, think about things that are taking place and then bring things and kind of help them correspond with each other. Here we see what are some examples of conflicts that were caused by intolerance. And of course, we gave some on page 28, which is the Holocaust the civil rights movement, and hate crimes. And of course, has that slowed down any at all? The Holocaust, something very interesting, that's where six million Jews were slaughtered due to their belief of what they chose to believe. Well, they wouldn't, wouldn't hurting anyone, they just chose to believe a certain way, and over six million Jews were slaughtered. Now, I'm stating that as a fact, but I can tell you, I just spoke with a principal from Fort Worth who recently just quit her job, and I spoke with her yesterday. And I asked, I said, why did you quit your job? I said, was it due to the disrespect that students show teachers? And she said, you know, that wasn't as bad as I was teaching a class on the Holocaust, and I was told by the superiors, my superiors, the board over the school, that the Holocaust may not, may not have taken place that that could be just her opinion of something that took place. So they were telling her that the Fort Worth School District would no longer be teaching the Holocaust. 
And she said, I'm not Jewish, but I know what history says. And she knew people that were part of it. So she said she quit. She goes, I can't do this anymore. I can't teach and be politically correct at the same time. People have to know the facts of what hate brings. And I thought it was very interesting what she said. And, of course, that she walked away from the job. Now, that doesn't fix anything. She just she became frustrated. She's an older lady, so it was probably about time to retire for her anyway. But she's walking away from frustrations, but that doesn't fix problems. And I'm not saying that she's trying to avoid it. I think she's just at a stage in her life to where the fight's just not worth it. But how does that, how does that affect us? Well, if you think about in society, and have this in your mind when we go through this, in society right now, and I want to be very careful how I explain this, we have comments being made in society to where and I want to state beforehand, I am not endorsing vaccines, nor am I endorsing you to not take a vaccine. I believe that is everybody's personal choice. You have to make your personal choice, and I'm not here to influence you one way or the other. But when we go out into society, and you'll have the medical field, and we're talking about accepting here and positive communication. If you want to get something done, you have to communicate in a positive way. But Google these things and look them up where you'll see doctors. These are trained physicians that will say, right now in society what we have is a battle of the vaccinated and the stupid people. Now, how do you feel if you're someone that has chosen not to vaccinate? And once again, I'm not here to tell you you should or you shouldn't. I'm just here to show you comments that are being made. But they're really coming against people that are choosing, well, I don't want that in my body. It's my body. It's my choice, right? Well, why does that, why does that not work when someone wants a vaccine or doesn't want a vaccine when they say, it's my body, my choice. I do or I don't want it. That's not acceptable in today's society. But why when Planned Parenthood and when the abortions take place, can you say, my body, my choice, it's my right. And people, they approve of that. But when it comes to the very same sort of medical procedures, when we're talking about a vaccination, my body, my choice, the medical industry profession, not all, but some will refer to you as stupid. Well, why is that taking place? Is that accepting? There was even a doctor that came out yesterday that said insulting people that do not want to be vaccinated will not improve things. And that's probably the smartest comment I've seen thus far. It won't improve things. And we're going to have to learn in society, we including myself and everyone that's here in the Peaceful Solution, teachers teaching their students, we have to change what's going on. If it's broken, we have to change the way that it's going. We have to learn to communicate in a better, more efficient, more positive way. But where does that start with? Who do we start communicating with first? Well, look here to procedure two. And once again, your body, your choice. Just remember, that is a very true statement. It is your body and it is your choice, but you have to live with the choice. That's something you can't escape. We can't escape. None of us can. Well, here in... in uh, Procedure two, it says, tell students that they will learn how to show acceptance for others through positive communication and healthy interactions. So once again, show acceptance for others through positive communication and healthy interactions. Ask them to read the introduction found on page 43, and then we're going to read the section entitled Interaction and Communication found on page 45 through, or 44 through 45. Now notice stress that we communicate with our words and actions. So once again, with our words and our actions. This is called verbal and nonverbal communication. Communication, turning over here, communication is the avenue through which we interact with others. Explain that we communicate with ourselves by what is called self-talk. So talking to yourself. You're not as crazy as you think if you talk to yourself, and we all do it. We might not all admit to it, but we all do it. 
Everybody knows they do, especially when you look at yourself first thing in the morning and, wow, I've gotten old or this or that. Is that a gray hair? Can't be. Um, and then it says, of course, reasoning within our minds or talking or reasoning within our minds or talking ourselves in and out of behaving certain ways is how we communicate with ourselves. You know, some people, they, they talk about, you know, that there's always this little voice telling them to do this or to do that. And really it's yourself and the education you've received uh, telling you to do it or not to do it, you know. And it's not always, it's not always, you know, should I steal this or shouldn't I steal that? It could be, should I eat, you know, should I eat this third piece of cake or shouldn't I? Should I buy this really expensive car or shouldn't I? You know, some things are there. It's not really life or death, but it depends on how much stress you want to add to your life or how much more exercise you want to add. Well, it says positive communication improves the way we communicate and interact with others. But notice here, it starts with ourselves first. And you can write for yourself here so you'll have it. We're not going to get there, obviously, in the next month or two, but you'll eventually get there. Chapter 2 of the Respect Unit deals with this in much more detail, but you'll link these two together. Chapter 2 of the Respect Unit and Chapter 3 of the Acceptance Unit goes hand in hand and put together really lays out a very great foundation for what uh, positive communication is, and it starts with how we see and treat ourselves. And it's very important to understand that. So turning over to page 43, Turning over to page 43, here at the very top you see a thought cloud. And it says, communicating with respect builds bridges that can last a lifetime. So once again, communicating with respect builds bridges that can last a lifetime. And when you think about countries dealing with each other right now, and something that was very popular in the news was where the United States and China met in Alaska just a few months ago. And the, the tone of voice, you'll hear this. If you look this up and watch on YouTube what everyone had to say about it, the tone of voice was very abrupt. This tension was thick in the air. And, of course, they were trying to describe without saying they were very disrespectful to each other. That would have been just the straight-up honest truth. There was a lot of disrespect shown to each other. And, of course, China started out by saying, do not talk down to us. If you want to talk to us, you can talk eye to eye, but do not talk down. And they were trying to tell the United States, we want you to respect us more. We don't want you to look at us as a lesser group of people. Now, of course, when it comes to leveraging, and that's what they were speaking of, they wanted to help build their leverage. Well, the leverage we're wanting to build here with the Peaceful Solution is everybody benefiting from the things that are taking place in our lives. All of us making decisions making choices, doing things that bring zero harm. That is, if you want, you hear the thing about greenhouse gases or carbon and these emissions, if we want to make society better, get, get, a, get a chart out there and start getting immorality and get it down to zero. When we get that down to zero, we will be a society where everyone benefits, everyone enjoys life, and everyone... Uh, will be thankful and look forward to the next day that comes. People won't wake up dreading the very next day because there's people in society that they don't accept themselves, and we've talked about that in the character unit, young people, teenagers, the most common, that they're not able to cope with what society puts upon them. The expectations are way higher than what they should be, and some of them are actually... They're not even acceptable that those expectations be put on youth. But they are from a society peer pressure fit into this conformity kind of atmosphere. And they end up taking their life for something that there was nothing wrong with them to begin with. It's just expectations uh, were not what they should have been. Well, here with Chapter 3, positive communication leads to healthy interaction. Well, notice here it says, unless you are the only inhabitant, on a deserted island, at least 90% of your day is spent interacting, communicating, and consequently building relationships with others. Needless to say, most people do not live on a desert island. In fact, studies indicate that the majority of the world's population lives in cities. How we interact and communicate play an important role 
in the quality of our relationships. So here you have a very basic comment talking about how most people live in cities and the interaction between those people determine the quality of their lives. So remember when we talked about what is a healthy family? What is a healthy family? And I printed out some of these because I wanted to read to you. What is a healthy family? And of course, this is just page 44 from the character unit. And notice, and I'll read this so you'll have it in your mind, and you can put a note there uh, referring back to this on page 44 of the character unit entitled, What is a Healthy Family? It said, in these families, physical and mental health are also valued. Therefore, the abuse of alcohol or drugs are discouraged. And notice there are open discussions and positive communication about the dangers of illegal drugs and abuse of alcohol. Some families explore alternatives uh, to the use of legal drugs. They study and use herbs and other natural substitutes to relieve symptoms and ailments. And another aspect, and this continues on here to page 46, another aspect of a family trained with moral character is to resolve all conflicts by finding a peaceful solution Notice that shows respect for other family members. So once again, it's dealing with something in a way that shows positive communication. There's no downgrading. There's no speaking down to someone. There's no telling someone they're foolish, they're ignorant. How could you do something so stupid? You know, and because think about in society today, it's your body, it's your choice. Are you stupid because you don't make a choice? Society endorses it. It's your body. Do what you want to do with it, right? Just be able to live with the choice that you make. Well, remember as society, we have to choose whether we want to deal with things uh, in a moral way or an immoral way. Because notice a reference back here to page 46 also in the character unit. It says negative communication and showing disrespect for others do not solve anything. In fact, they create more problems. On the other hand, Treating others with respect and using positive communication resolves conflicts and creates a peaceful solution. So if you've ever been involved in a situation and there's disrespect being shown or there's emotions really running and argumentations taking place, people are one level getting above the other. If you ever notice, the problem never starts getting better until both people calm down and sometimes they have to walk away from each other, take a deep breath, and once the emotions calm down and the disrespect stops, and then they refocus and get back on the positive communication, things start moving forward again. But nothing ever moves forward with using disrespectful words, disrespectful tones. None of those things ever build up a family or a community as we're speaking of right here. In the second paragraph, it says, if you have ever said something that was misunderstood by someone, then you know the problem resulting from poor communication. Poor communication can cause conflicts, hurt feelings, and convey an attitude of intolerance. So once again, you can convey that you're not seeing that person as important, because remember, that's the very beginnings of leading to hate. In the previous chapter, you learned that intolerance in any form is negative and has the potential to cause resentment and animosity. And once again, page 24 has that equation that shows how intolerance leads to hate. And once again, this is talking about something that is mistakenly done, something that is not intentional. Well, communication here at the very bottom, communication is vital to our lives. So remember that next time you, you, you're in a relationship and you think that, you know, students will do this to teachers, teachers will do this to students, husbands will do it to wives, wives will do it to husbands, employers will do it to employees, employees do it to employers. This takes place every day. The infamous silent treatment. I'm just not going to talk to him. I want him to know, or I want her to know, I just don't want to talk to him. And we'll work really hard for that person to know that I'm not saying a word to you. I want you to know that I just don't want to talk to you. And the only reason that's done, think about it. You know, have you ever done someone like that? Odds are more than once. And why did you do it? Why do we do it? 
it's not a positive thing. Usually you want someone to know that you're just trying to let that person know you hurt me, so I want to hurt you back. I want you to know that I don't need you. But don't go anywhere because I really need you. But I want you to think I don't need you at least for a short time. And this is the goofidity that society is faced in. Now imagine a child going through this where a parent will give the child the silent treatment for doing something that's wrong. Now I don't mean the parent takes time before they talk to the child. In other words, something comes up, something is done wrong, and the parent says, I want to talk to you about this. What you did was wrong. In a little while, I want to talk to you about it and have a conversation. I'm not talking about that. <clears throat> I'm talking about where a parent screams and yells at a child and then shuts it off because it's mad at the child. Or a leader yells at their subordinates or an employer yells at the employees and we see that in society by telling people they're dumb they're stupid they're ignorant you need to do it my way well remember the acceptance and the positive communication the negativity never builds anything and this communication is vital the positive communication is vital and to get somewhere we have to be positive we have to be respectful showing care and consideration. And as it said at the very top, it builds bridges. And as the author of The Peaceful Solution said one time, if you have a problem with somebody, build a bridge and get over it. He was talking about respect that person and solve the problem. Well, here back in the third paragraph, it says, through positive communication, misunderstandings and conflicts can be avoided. In fact, how we communicate conveys our acceptance of those around us. In this chapter, you will learn that positive communication, interaction, and mutual respect lay the foundation for health for all healthy moral relationships. So if you don't have that underlined, underline that. And that's something that, you know, it wouldn't hurt if you're a teacher. Put this in your classroom. Put it up on your chalkboard. Put it on the calendar. You know, nothing wrong with saying and having this in the mind of everyone every day that, you will learn positive communication or learning positive communication, interaction, and mutual respect lay the foundation for all healthy and moral relationships. Uh, no one wants to be in a relationship that's continually disrespectful. No one wants to live in a society that's continually disrespectful. If we face a challenge in society, and there's some challenges that have affected all of society, all of us are affected, whether you're in school, whether you have a workplace, whether you have a business, whether you're retired. There's some challenges that are affecting all of us right now. And coming together, eliminating the disrespect, and finding a common ground to solve these problems is exactly what the piece of solution is speaking about. In your schools, you know, do this with your classrooms. If you have students that are very disrespectful, well, remember, it has to be taught, and you're competing with what goes on at home. Not all parents are active enough in their children's life to actually educate them. And we discussed that in the second chapter of the character unit about how these things take place. But this interaction and communication, that's the hope that we talked about on character, in the character unit on page 117. That's how we give people hope, through the positive interaction and communication and helping them see that they have value. This is how it takes place. There's no secret ingredient or pixie dust you dust on someone. It literally comes from what we say and how we say it. So here on page 44, we talk about interaction and communication. And it says, interaction simply means the way we affect and influence each other. Our most important means of interaction is communication. Now, if you remember influence, that was on page 60 in the character unit page 60 in the character unit and it said influences are all around us and once again it said and I'm gonna to read to you page 60 at least a part of it from the character unit it said your values play a key role in developing your character remember what a value is that's found on page 6 of the character unit that's something you deem important uh, what you value is something you'll take care of but once again your values they play a key role in developing your character and you must be aware of how influences affect the things that are important to you. And once again, an influence is something or someone that has the ability to affect your attitude, way of thinking, 
feeling, and behaving. And that's either positive or negative. A person can affect the way you think and feel and act in a positive way or a negative way. And it can be done with words or actions or a combination of both. And don't ever forget this on page 64. It's at the very bottom of the page here. We'll pull it up to see if we can get it a little bit bigger. But once again, don't underestimate the influence violence can have on your character. And well, why would we want to talk about violence on our character? Well, if you remember, we're told not to underestimate the power of an influence or the violence on the character. Well, think about the violence we've seen in society. Think about the violence we see in, in cities today. Think about the wars we've had throughout centuries and then try to reason, did they solve anything? Here we just passed in the last few days, it was the anniversary of the dropping of the atomic bomb in Japan, and we think, did we really win? Did we solve problems? Well, Japan accepts the United States and what we do now, right? But what about all the people that died and suffered? How do you bring a positive result by causing millions of people to suffer? Decisions based on morality brings harm to no one, not yourself, not to the Americans, not to the Japanese, nor to the environment. The atomic bomb brought harm to the Japanese, it brought harm to the American citizens, and it brought harm to the environment. And you still see in society where you see a lot of countries building up nuclear silos, missiles, atomic bombs, it's in the news every day, and that's supposed to be the answers to our conflicts. It didn't work in the 40s, and it's not going to work in this century either. Just because they're bigger and stronger and can pollute more of the environment doesn't mean they're going to work. We just are creating a bigger problem. Remember communication, that's where it's at. Not dropping bombs, but communicating with each other. If you and your neighbor have a conflict and you decide to start shooting at each other naturally someone's going to call the police and say hey they're they're trying to kill each other over here and they're going to arrest someone and they're going to take you to jail and tell you how you shouldn't do things like that you're going to go before a judge who's going to tell you that you endangered not only your lives but you endangered the whole community by not working out your problems and accepting each other as neighbors but we do that with countries and we'll bring out bigger machine guns and bigger tanks and we'll go to war. And that's acceptable. Is it acceptable? They say it's acceptable, but is it really acceptable? You know, that word can be used very loosely to promote things that aren't very positive. Continuing on here, it says, and this is the second paragraph here on page 44. Could you imagine being joyful, sad, upset, or scared and having no way to share that information with anyone? Imagine if you had no way to communicate or interact with your family or friends. Imagine not being able to use your facial expressions, hands, or body gestures with or your mouth to speak. Body gestures with or your mouth to speak. You would have no way of sharing any information. Picture this gives us an appreciation for the ability to communicate and the importance it plays on our lives. If you can write down for your notes here, if you've never been through our grade five unit, grade five unit three, grade five unit three and procedure six, that's the procedure we take and if you're a teacher that's teaching middle school or even high school, it's still a very great procedure to use because that's one to where it deals with having people and limit, take them and limit them from communicating for a day and to see how much they can accomplish. So it doesn't not only allow no positive communication, there's no negative communication, there's zero communication. And it allows them to see, well, how much can you accomplish on your own? How much can you get done by yourself? And it becomes very difficult. You realize very quickly that we need each other, as we talked about in the character unit. We're very interdependent on each other as a society. You're not going to succeed all by your lonesome. Uh, people look at, you know, they say Jeff Bezos, a self-made billionaire. 
it took a lot of people supporting and buying his product to get that man to where he's at today. Same thing with other people that are wealthy. Uh, they didn't do it by themselves. There was a whole group of people that worked with them. Now, that's monetary. When you think of the Peaceful Solution Program that started off in Abilene, Texas, back you know, in the 90s with a group of parents and teachers and an author that was really concerned, and to this day you see it being taught in over 26 different countries where there's established schools, now, there's other countries that are using it, but we're talking about countries that have schools that are established that are actually teaching the curricula, strictly the Peaceful Solution curricula. And this is just from a very small group in Texas that had this idea and put it all together. And we've seen other nations accept this because they see it as beneficial. Well, this communication that we need to have no communication is not better than bad communication, and bad communication is not better than no communication. The only way to fix problems is positive communication, and that's required. That's an ingredient that's needed. It's like if you want to, uh, if you want to bake a cake and you have to have ingredients to do it, you have to have it. It's like if you want to make a hamburger, but you don't have the hamburger to make it with, you're never going to get your hamburger. Well, it's the same way with acceptance and fixing problems in society and learning to accept each other we have to have positive communication that's the foundation that's where everything else is built upon and if it's not done through care consideration and concern as we've learned true care true value of someone else true value of yourself and the outcome that will be the society or the environment if that's not there, there's no foundation and it will quickly fall apart. You'll see disrespect, you'll see conflict that will arise. Well, moving on here, all about the words on page 44 still. It says words are powerful. And once again, remember influences. Remember how powerful these influences can be. And remember the example that starts off in the front of every junior high unit with the author talking about the power of the words that his father mentioned when he was a very young man about how two wrongs don't make a right. This get even, fight back, never solves problems. Well, he didn't just hear that. He put that to work in his life. And he used that thought and the work that he's done to work with other people to bring forth not just one book or five books, but a library of books on how the comments that he heard as a young man that influenced him they were so powerful it led to something like this with hundreds of thousands of people involved in this character education program and this is from a man his father that died in 1974 that never knew about this program coming into action but those few simple words that he mentioned in front of someone that took heed to it turned into something so big I'm sure he would have never imagined such few words mentioned in an instant would have made such an impact. Now, those were positive words. What takes place when someone says negative things in an instant? Because honestly, when do we say things we regret? It's when we become emotional. It's when we say, oh, I wasn't thinking. Well, we are thinking, but we're not considering what we truly value. And we talked about that the ones in the character unit and the all in the family, the ones we value the most are, tend to be the ones we treat the worst sometimes. And that seems kind of counterproductive because we need positive communication to build these healthy relationships. Otherwise, you know, you see in society today, they're married today, divorced tomorrow. There are irreconcilable differences. There's no way we can fix this. It's because the disrespect toward each other has gotten so large. Well, Countries can't divorce each other. The United States can't divorce Mexico. We're stuck with Canada and Mexico, and it's not going to change. <laughs> you can't just, oh, we divorce you. The border's gone, you know. Uh, it don't work that way. And think of China on the other side of the world. Economically, the United States can't divorce China. We're so intertwined and interdependent as a society, we have to learn to be benefit. A benefit to each other and it's the same way with schools you can have schools in Abilene Texas you can have them in Houston Texas Dallas Texas 
and then you can go to Shreveport, Louisiana, Little Rock, Arkansas. You can keep moving to Memphis, Tennessee, on into Charlotte, North Carolina. You can go up to Roanoke, Virginia, and head up to the north, and then go out to the west, and in the Midland. You can have that. And everyone is very interdependent with each other. And many people in school will say, well, how does going to school here affect someone there? Start asking people when you're dealing with them, ask them, are you originally from here? You'll find out when people are educated, they move. And they relocate to different areas of not just the country, but also the world. And the education they received where they grew up is what they take with them. That's their idea of how things should be. So how we educate in one place will most definitely affect another place. And then when we have things like social media and Skype and other venues where you can communicate globally, the way we talk, the way we conduct ourselves, and how we say words are very powerful. And they affect everyone everywhere. So once again here, words are powerful. They convey our needs thoughts, feelings, and consequently, our character. Once again, underline that. Words are powerful. They convey our needs, thoughts, feelings, and consequently, our character. And you can tie that back into the definition of character where thoughts lead to feelings and feelings lead to actions. Because your actions, that determines whether your character is positive or negative. Whether our actions are positive or whether they are negative are all based off the words that are put, this knowledge that comes forth from a mouth or from the actions of a person, they teach us. Well, continuing on, it says, the words you speak can either show care and concern or they can embarrass, threaten, or frighten others. Well, that care and concern, that's respect. That's the respect we're talking about, and we're going to keep moving toward that. But anytime you see care, consideration, or concern, you know we're talking about an ingredient to respect. So in other words, whether you are an honest or compassionate, deceitful or selfish, these are all indi uh, indicated by the words you choose when communicating and interacting with others. Verbal and written communication are important aspects of how we interact with others. And you think about that right now, this is pretty much describing a classroom setting. A teacher in school, they rely on the books and then what comes from their mouth to teach them that the written and the verbal is two of the greatest forms of communicating education. You can have a book, and I had, I've had books, and I've even had this book, but I had to have teachers that taught me what was in this book, and I'm still learning every day, just as all the teachers are, uh, just as teachers in school. They can have master degrees, but they're still learning. Well, we're still learning from these books because character education is something that's always evolving. Every day is a different adventure to itself. And that leaves for different situations that we have to use what we've learned to try to fix. Or if we kind of let it you know, break on us, we have to pick all the pieces back up, put them back in the right places, and try again. But we've got to pick those pieces up first and then put them back together and then give another go. Uh, but this written and verbal communication are extremely important. You know, it's always a joke, and I know we don't have it today because nobody uses a map anymore. Or how many people have ever bought something? You know, men will buy lawnmowers. It used to be a lawnmower was put together when you bought it. Now it comes in a box. You have to assemble it. You know, and the first thing someone will do, you know, they're like, oh, that's instructions. Huh. I know how to do this. And then after an hour and a half, it's like, where did that go again? They start looking for the instructions. Well, I don't remember it ever being that way. Well, no, things have evolved. Things are different. Society's different. Problems are different in society. Uh, society in general, how it operates is different due to technology. So reading instructions and remembering there's basic guidelines, and if they're applied, can fix any problem but they have to be repeated and we have to continually read them because we can find that here in the acceptance unit we have a great part but when we get to the respect unit you'll find out how they all merge together and they're all needed it would be like taking the respect unit and go I've read that before 
and just throwing the respect unit aside. There's so much more that is going to tie in from this right here. But the instructions, the communication, extremely important as teachers in our schools know. Well, the more words you're familiar with, the better you will be able to clearly express yourself. Effectively using words when you speak and write will lessen opportunities for misunderstandings and miscommunications. So the next time you're given vocabulary words, study them and try to incorporate them into your everyday conversation. Now, this is something I want to point out. This is something that's not telling you to go get a you know, dictionary and use words this big. And when you speak, the author of The Peaceful Solution told me one time, and uh, I, I laughed about it. I was actually sitting with him watching a speech. He was showing me something in an example. And I felt really ignorant when I'm watching it because I'm, I didn't understand probably 80% of the words that were being used in the speech. And I was really nervous about, I know I'm going to be asked questions after this is over with to see what I understood. And I was really, really nervous. And after it was done, you know, the author asked me, he said, now what did you understand from that? And I kind of put my head down. I was like, honestly, I didn't. And the example, I felt better after he explained it. He was showing me, he said, if you go into a place, a school, third graders, second graders, and if you talk to them like you're talking to college students, you haven't helped anybody. You're not helping the first person in that room. He said, find words that everyone can understand and use them. And you'll see up here in the Peaceful Solution that we'll always show words with definitions because you just don't take for granted everyone knows what that word means. And a lot of times, words have very different meanings. You know, you know one thing I've learned with talking with people overseas and in other countries that speak other languages, they take your words at face value. And one time, someone was asking me, uh, about a certain project we were working on, and they live in a different country, and they speak a different language. And I said, you know, I, sleeping last night here in the United States, we have holidays that they shoot fireworks off. And fireworks were going off all night. And the person was trying to understand, so you couldn't sleep because something was off? I'm like, yeah, they shot them off, yeah. They were very loud. But to them, I thought off means... It's like, turn the lights off. There's nothing. Turn the sound off. There's nothing. And it took me a little bit to understand that when I say shoot them off, they thought it meant, okay, everything went silent. It was done. But here we know that it just means like a war is taking place outside. And there's many other words that we'll get into in the next class to where the word can mean two different things. And it's the very same word. And one of the words is sanctions. And we'll get into that next class when we get into the, the part of it's how you say it. But the word sanctions, I'll give you something to look forward to, how it can be the same word, but two completely different meanings. So once again here, familiarizing ourselves with these words, and at the very bottom, it says the average person learns to speak when he or she is about two years of age. But words have been influencing us before we were born even before we were born. And of course, we've, we've talked about and we'll eventually get to the parenting manual where there's scientific proof showing that a child in the womb can even identify the voice of its mother and father. It can identify tones of voice and it can feel uh, emotions. At the very bottom here, notice it says, before the invention of the telephone, writing letters was the only means of communicating over, distance, over distances. And when you think about Think about text messages when they first came out. And I know for teenagers, they probably think they've always been out, but text messages haven't always been out like writing letters. Um, but you see now this plethora of emojis to help. They're supposed to express the emotion when you say something because words alone, through a text, you're kind of like, well, are they mad? Are they okay? Is it accepting? You know, is it something that they're upset with me, or is it okay? Did I do a great job? Is it a bad job? 
You know, it's like when someone goes, oh, that's fine. That can either mean it's excellent, like a fine piece of art, or that's fine as, well, it's not what I wanted, but it's acceptable. You know, it'll, it'll do. So it's fine. Two vastly different meanings when someone always, when you ask someone, how did you like it? And they say, it's fine. It always, well, must be something they didn't like. You try to pry a little bit more. Well, you know, education in society, when we work toward and expressing and communicating in a way to where we all understand that, hey, if it's broken, let's fix it. If there's something wrong, let's discuss it and move it forward. But never, ever be a neighbor that picks up your gun to shoot your neighbor across the fence line. And if we say that's wrong and we accept that fact, then we have to accept it's not right to pick up a machine gun or a tank and shoot another country. And if we say that it's your body, it's your choice, and we already talked about in the character unit that abor abortion is murder, scientifically it's murder, that's why you have to kill it. Remember, it's a lie. They have to terminate it. If that brings harm. So when someone says, I do want to be vaccinated or I don't want to be vaccinated, it's their choice. We've already established that you can choose something that even hurts someone here in the United States. So let's think about not forcing someone to do something, but what is the actual problem? and what needs to be done to fix it, and how can we communicate that with them. So we're going to stop at this point because we're going to build off of that on the next class and getting into it's not only what you say but how you say it and the intention behind what we say because the intention behind what the author did here was to bring complete peace not only to classrooms, which is what we're trying to help with teachers and the things we've learned in talking to teachers and going into classrooms and teaching them, uh, and any information, and this is a request that we have for you in closing, teachers that are watching this, that are looking at it through Facebook or watching it through other sources, please give us your feedback. If you're using these things in your classroom and you're trying to interact with your students, give us feedback and let us know how it's going. And we're not saying just tell us the positive and don't mention anything that you, that you might deem negative. If there's things or, or situations that arise in the classes you're using them, please let us know. We're interested to know how we can help everyone because, once again, we're still learning ourselves and we're learning to apply these things into our everyday lives, and this is a continual process. And As the author said in the very, the very beginning, teachers, we have a lot of value placed in teachers because that is going to determine the direction of not only our youth, but also anyone that's willing to come to a class and listen. So we're going to stop there. We'll continue back on page 40, 45, next class. Our next class will be uh, on 8.15. It will be on a Sunday, and it will start at 5.30 p.m. Thank you very much for joining us.